Once again, Westland Lutheran, it's a pleasure to be here and be able to visit with you. My name is Greg Lord, and he's president of the count, your church council and uh, uh, active in our, our stewardship uh, committee, which is courageous stewardship. We give thee but thy own. T today with me, a longtime friend, uh, both here at church and off the campus of the church at Pacific Lutheran University. We all, we all went to college together, my wife, Chris, and uh, Jan Applesheimer. And it's a pleasure to have you here this afternoon with us, Jan. Thanks, Greg. I'm really happy that you asked me to join you today. One of the things about courageous stewardship is let people tell their story and about why they're here, why they're active, why they give. And so I, I have a few questions that I'm going to ask Jan and uh, let's, let's hear a little bit about her story. First of all, uh, Jan, uh, you've been a longtime member here, both you and your family. So why don't you share a little bit about your membership here, your family, and how long you've been actually coming here to Westland Lutheran. Sure. Um, I joined this church in 1973. And um, I met Gary here in 1980. And we both got on the church council together, and that was in January. And we were married in November of the same year. <laughs> All right. um, we have two sons, Matthew and Daniel. Uh, Matthew is married to our lovely daughter, Catherine. And uh, Daniel has a, a lovely girlfriend, Johanna. Um, Great. So how, how you've been here since the early 70s. So you've seen a lot of things here at the church, uh, as well as transition from pastors. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna kind of put you on the spot here. The first pastor that we all had here was Gary Olson. What kept you coming here with uh, Gary and now through what we're doing now? Well, he married us, he baptized our children. Um, I loved his mission here. He was uh, very caring and accepting of all people. And uh, our church has a long history with that. I, I like the words that Jan used. She used caring and accepting. If you look at our mission statement, that is really the part of it. Inviting, relationships oriented. So that really ties into it. Jan, the next question I'd like to ask you, you know, one ministry in particular has, has really your passion. Could you share a little bit about that? Yes, um, I guess my biggest passion is music. <laughs> um, I've been singing all my life. I was the little girl that sat on my daddy's lap and <clears throat> leaned her head against his chest and felt wow. the vibrations, and he sang harmony. So, Greg, I think in harmony. I, I think always in harmony. I'm always trying to harmonize. <laughs> um, <clears throat> then I sing in the choir, and I love that experience coming here. Of course, we haven't been able to the last year, but we've made music on Zoom together. And yeah. it's a, a community that where we can have fellowship and we can laugh and joke with each other, but we also really care for each other and support each other. Um, and then helping with special music, um, that's a a big passion of mine. Um, I love to read the lessons ahead and search for a song that has some of those, some of that context in them. And I, I pray over it and it's amazing. Every, just about every single time God gives me a song to sing, so. That's awesome. Did you hear the word that Jan used in, in her answering my questions? She used the word harmony. And harmony is just a great word. And for us, it's working together for a common cause in, in the Lord's name. And, I, and with your music, Jan, you bring that all together. So that kind of leads into the next question. You kind of answered it already is, Jan, how, how is God working in your daily life? Mm -hmm. I thought about this question ahead of time. And... Um, in several ways, um, I love to spend time in nature. I love to spend time in the garden. And a lot of times I will sing in the garden and um, do my prayer while I'm pulling weeds or planting or cutting. Um, <coughs> G 
Gary and I have traveled quite a bit, and we recently went to the Grand Canyon and Bryce and Zion, and I, I see the grandeur of what God's created there, the beauty. But I also experienced um, the fires a year ago with my family having to be um, d relocated to different places, and, and also the ice storm. I went through a, a surgery right before that, so we felt the, the power and the destruction of the trees coming down, and, and yet everything is regrowing now, and I see the healing when I come to our land. Um, I, I see God connecting me with other people. Um, we have made a point to call friends and family over the last year and a half, especially just because we couldn't meet with them in person. And I, I see, um, I, I try to be a reflection to other people, and I see God's reflection coming back to me in other people by their, their kindness, their trusting, their friendship, their faithfulness, um, so those are some of the ways. Awesome. Uh, that's a sermon in itself right there, <laughs> Jan. Did you hear the word connection? That's what we're good at here at Westland Luther. Did you also hear the word reflection? That's what Jan is doing with us today and that I hope you do uh, down the road as well. Jan, I'd like to go on here, and um, you and Gary, and, and you in particular, have been giving your time to this particular ministry that you mentioned. But you've also been giving generously to this church as a whole. Could you say to us, why, why do you do that? Well, we give as a response to everything that we have. And <coughs> not because we have to or it's expected of us, but with a cheerful heart and we, that we feel that we're giving back to what we have received. Again, I like the word you use, Jan. You use the word response. And that mm -hmm. what it, that's what courageous stewardship is, ladies and gentlemen. It's a response to what God has given us to use in his name. And both you and Gary are great examples of that. Jan, how do you think that the giving that you do is uh, supporting God's work? Well, um, our financial support keeps the place running. <laughs> you know, it pays the salaries and utilities and things like the mortgage. And the benevolence part of our financial giving uh, helps people in our communities and around the world. And when people's needs are met, I think they're better, better able to connect with God. The volunteer part of our giving includes, for Gary, coordinating the video system, which helps reach out to people who are not able to attend in person and in making it easier for them to connect with our church family and with God. It's really hard for people to come in right now, so taking the service out to people is helpful. And then for me, singing and sharing my God gift with others also, I do um, quilting and fidget quilts for people with dementia. And as I'm sewing and stitching, I, I pray for the person that will be receiving these quilts and their family. I've seen, I've read thank you notes and have had testimonies of people who tell us how special those are to them. That quilt, uh, I'm going to be talking about those quilts uh, later on in the winter uh, time over one of these temple talks about how it affected my life. So, Jan, I have felt those prayers. We've talked about here at Westland Lutheran uh, about hope. Uh, we've used it a lot during the, uh, the COVID time, and uh, it's been used a lot in our sermon and sermons by the pastors. But Jan, Jan, I'm going to turn it back to you for a minute. 
what is your greatest hope for what God might do with the gifts that you give? You know, you talked about the service, taking it out to others. Is that, that's, yeah. I can see that as one of your gifts, honestly. Right. That, that, that's the first thing I thought of, is reaching a broad range of people in need. Bet. Um, I'm proud of our outreach programs here at Westland Lutheran, um, helping people eat, yep. staying connected. And that's a very difficult thing to do during the pandemic, and clothing people and supporting people in their needs, basically. I don't know if you know this, but we have at, at least 34 different outreach groups in this church. And that's made up of you, the people that are listening and watching today. It's not just a Greg Lord or a Jan Eppelsheimer thing. You people have really stepped up in your courageous stewardship. Well, one of the last things, Jan, as we wrap this up here, um, I, I think this is a, a great question, so I really want you to think about it. How do you feel your life is better because of your generosity? Well, it feels good when I can do my part to help people stay connected and help others' needs be met and offer the joy and comfort that sometimes only music can provide in their lives. And I feel like keeping myself healthy and strong so that I can continue to do God's work. I'm only one person, but it takes all of us to do that work. And I, I, I had a line, um, I, I am only a spark, make me a fire. I am only a string, make me a liar. Very well put, Jan. And you, you're more than one because of what you give to this church. But you know what, Jan? There are others out here that are watching and that are sitting here this morning that have a story as well. And we're not going to be able to interview everybody, but please take some time, jot down your story, jot down some of your feelings, your passions about Westland Luther. Mm -hmm. That information that you can send to me will be used as we put together our church profile as we transition into the next phase of our faith community here. So please take some time to do that. And remember, courageous stewardship, yes, it is about money but it's more than that it's about you and me it's about what Jan said in in connections reflections giving hope so that's what we're looking at as we approach this Christmas season and into 2022 on behalf of the courageous stewardship Com committee Jan I want to thank you for your time today in coming in here uh, don't forget this will be all shown also on YouTube along with my email address. Please send me your message. Thank you and God be with you.